Learning 3D modeling and animation, or 3D art in general, is kinda tricky. Many beginners dive in, with huge enthusiasm, and they feel super confident after learning just a few basics. You made the blender donut, and you suddenly feel like you are the king of the hill, or the king of the mountain. It is kinda true, but do you know what that mountain is called? Well, they call it Mount Stupid. You see, this early overconfidence is a basic example of the Dunning-Kruger effect, a cognitive bias where people with limited experience overestimate their abilities. And this often happens in art, especially in 3D, because it seems like an exciting skill to learn. In other words, you don't know what you don't know yet, so everything seems doable, which is a good thing I would say, in fact necessary. Otherwise, without it, you wouldn't even start. But as you gain a bit more insight, reality hits hard and that confidence can crash as fast as it rose. So in this video, I'll go with you over all the stages that anyone, I mean all three artists will go through, whether you are a beginner or a professional, and talk about why most newbies quit. So you've just started learning 3D modeling. Imagine you follow a beginner tutorial, like a Blender Donut tutorial, and create your first simple model. It looks, well, not bad, maybe even pretty good. You're feeling like a rock star. At this moment, you are standing proudly at the top of peak Mount Stupid. This tongue-in-cheek term describes this initial high point where confidence is sky high. But confidence, well, is very low, with only a little knowledge under your belt. You're convinced that 3D art will be a breeze, or at least you think it is not gonna be that hard, because everyone is doing it, right? Generally speaking, people develop inflated confidence after just learning something new, underestimating the complexity ahead. A new 3D artist might genuinely think, I've got this, how hard can it be? But why does this happen in the first place? Simply put, when you only know a few basics, everything seems straightforward. You don't yet see the hundreds of advanced techniques, pitfalls, and hours of practice that professionals have mastered, so your confidence is high, because your knowledge is too shallow to reveal the challenges, which are gonna come ahead, so every newbie will go through this to some degree. I mean, it is not arrogance, but just the effect making you feel overconfident due to limited experience, so you can enjoy this optimism phase while it lasts, because next comes a reality check. After the initial high, reality inevitably sets in. Let's say you attempt a more complex original project, maybe modeling your own character or a detailed scene, and everything falls apart. The topology is messy, the lighting looks wrong, and texturing isn't that great. Nothing is working the way you expected. I mean, according to the idealized version in your head. Welcome to the Valley of Despair. This is the steep drop in the curve, where confidence of beginners plummets dramatically, Suddenly, you become painfully aware of how much you don't know, and it is not a great feeling, trust me. In fact, it's downright discouraging, and this is the stage where most people quit. You might catch yourself saying things like, I didn't realize it would be this complicated, or maybe I'm not cut out for this. And me personally, I've seen many people go through this stage, so the earlier swagger is gone, and now you feel like you know nothing. This stage is tough actually, but at the same time, it is important. It is here that you are reconciling your confidence with your actual level of skill. In other words, you are finally seeing the truth, that 3D art has a learning curve, and you are at the beginning of it. The valley of despair can be humiliating and overwhelming. You realize just how much there is to learn, and progress might seem impossibly slow. As I said, lots of people quit at this stage, without ever looking back. They assume if it is this hard, they will never get better. The good news in my personal experience, those who have artistic backgrounds, like they used to draw as kids, or they did something similar, will have a much higher chance of surviving the valley of despair, because they went through something similar before. In fact, this can happen even to those who are already 3D artists, but want to jump to something new, I mean new endeavors, like a Blender or a Max artist starting to learn something completely new like going from animation to game development, and learning something such as Unreal Engine, or maybe going to do VFX work using Houdini, 
with its complex nodes and programming. If you find yourself in this pit, remember that feeling lost or incompetent at this stage is actually normal. But the good news, your competence is slowly growing. Even though your confidence has taken a hit, it is uncomfortable, no doubt. But the key is to never give up and keep moving forward. So, assuming you survived the valley of despair, you will start making progress again. Enter the slope of enlightenment, the gradual upward climb where your skills improve and your confidence begins to recover. And this is where the practice comes in. You will need deliberate effort. Maybe you start watching tutorials, taking courses, and practice modeling different things, learn from mistakes, and perhaps even seek feedback from others, like on forums. So little by little, things start to click. As the saying goes, understanding deepens with practice. In this stage you might think, hey, I'm starting to connect the dots, or I feel in control now. Those are the signs that you're getting better as a 3D artist. Instead of blind confidence of Mount Stupid, your confidence now comes from actual experience. You've solved some problems, created more projects, maybe even mastered a few new tools, like how to do proper topology, good UV packing with all its pitfalls, good lighting and so on. So confidence is growing with each project, and your confidence grows alongside it, at a healthier pace, I would say. But most importantly, you also realize how much more there is to learn, and that is okay. Finally, after a lot of time and practice, you reach the comfortable high ground in your 3D learning curve. And this usually happens, I would say, after a couple of years, depending on your pace but for some, it might take longer. Enter the plateau of sustainability. This is essentially the stage of competent, consistent performance, and so on. You have assessed significant experience, and 3D feels natural to you now, like anything seems doable for real now. For example, modeling a complex character is not gonna be a problem, just the approach you're gonna take. You start thinking about the ways you're gonna skin the cat, if you will, because there is a lot of ways to do that. On this plateau, your confidence is high, and your confidence is steady and well-earned, because you know what you're doing. This might sound boring, but here, it means you have achieved a reliable level of skill. But how do you know that you have reached this level? Well, your attitude is a little bit more balanced, and realistic too. You no longer assume you know everything. In fact, you're likely aware of the nuances and complexities of 3D work. As an experienced artist, you might say something like, It depends. Let's look at the details when approaching a new project. Acknowledging there is nuance to consider, and you will do this when you start getting professional work, whether you are a freelancer or if you work inside a studio. In other words, you have learned that there are no silver bullets in 3D art. Solutions often require understanding of the specifics. Now, remember Mount Stupid? This is the opposite of that. Confidence is now in line with your competence. You don't widely overestimate your abilities, but you trust in the skills you have built. And I would say the takeaway of this video is the relationship between confidence versus competence. Throughout this journey, one thing becomes clear. Confidence isn't the same as competence. In the beginning, your confidence was high, while your actual skill was low as hell, which is a mismatch. Then, as you learned more, gained more competence, through learning the fundamentals and being a good modeler, you know texturing, lighting and rendering, and people start telling you that your work is actually worthwhile, whether it be just viewers or actual clients, then you know that you have something. The next thing I will say will seem counterintuitive, but your confidence paradoxically dropped. Ironically enough, some people after many years of practice will be less confident compared to where they started because it was delusional confidence, let's say. But with experience, your competence grew and your confidence rose to match it in a more balanced way. And this is a keyword, balanced, not fake. The takeaway is, if you are a new 3D artist, be aware of this confidence competence curve. Don't be fooled with the early high. So stay humble enough to keep learning. And when you hit that discouraging low, just don't quit. My personal advice, recognize it as a sign that you are growing. And with persistence and practice, your confidence will increase, and you'll be able to do even better work. And there you have it, guys. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like these kind of videos, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.